So this video is to take you through the process of how we expect you to conduct a ward round and create the ward round note at the end of it all. So I'm going to work from the doctor's work list. We can change the ward here, uh, but I've set this up as I want it. As you know, you can change the various components in the work list up here. We can move these around. We can add in other ones. Uh, we can do whatever we like from that perspective, but I've set this up already. And looking at my ward here, uh, I can see which patients are unstable and stable, and maybe I want to go and see the unstable ones first, or perhaps go and see the discharged ones uh, first. Once I've seen a patient, I can change their status just by clicking on here and put them down as discharging if appropriate. Uh, also from here, as with the original bed view, we can see the resuscitation status of the patient, whether they've had their VTE assessment and their dementia assessment performed, and we can go straight in from here to conduct their VTE assessment, which we can see for these four patients is outstanding. Right, so I'm going to go into the, my patient and I'm going to do a ward round. So I'm in the doctor's, in the clinician workflow, I'm going to use the manage tab here. The admission tab clearly is for admission and for clerking. I'm in the manage tab. So the first question is, is this a consultant ward round or a registrar ward round? I put the person leading the ward round in here, uh, which enables us to document that information. And then because it's completed uh, at the, as part of the admission clerking and updated in any further ward rounds, I've got a quick summary here of what's been going on with the patient who came in with some breathlessness and a cough thought to have a chest infection uh, and has a bit of heart failure and COPD. So I've got a quick summary of what's going on there. These are the diagnoses that have already been entered. Um, I can see that these top three are relevant to this admission and this is the chronic history, the past medical history of the patient. I can go back here and have a look at um, the admission clerking if I'm not quite clear exactly what's going on. I can have a look at a bit more information down here or I could look at the previous ward round notes. I can look at what was done in the emergency department. So this is a quick and easy way of assessing uh, what was going on before. Quickly look at the vital signs, which would come in through here, the fluid balance, any recent um, investigations or x-rays that might be there. So now we're gonna go in and look at, have a talk to the patient, um, have a look at them, assess what's going on, examine them. There's another tab for examination that we could have here, but I've removed that because I don't think it's particularly helpful. But I think the, uh, the, the person who's speaking to the patient is doing so now and examining them. I'm going to be the scribe, uh, the SHO or the house officer is going to be scribing. Patient is stable, um, chest is clear, no further problems overnight. So that's, uh, examine, so that's the summary of what I wanted to enter for the ward round. If I want to uh, add any further investigations, I can do so here. I can type them in directly. If I want to do a x-ray chest or something, I could, I could simply do so from within here and come back at the end and complete the um, requirements for that field. But essentially, we now have... Uh, our summary of our three current diagnoses in the plan. If I thought that I wanted to add another diagnosis, uh, something new would happen, I could add it in here now. Pulmonary embolus, if that was, uh, if that was appropriate. Uh, I'm not going to do that, however, so I'm going to come down here and in terms of assessment of what's going on, so we're going to continue antibiotics, uh, that's stable, continue to monitor, and no action required at present. So that's my assessment, uh, and we want to start discharge planning, OT assessment, please. So that's the sort of outcome of my ward round. As I say, if I wanted to create any additional orders I could have done so earlier on and so I've collected all that information 
within this workflow end page. It's absolutely crucial now that I go on and actually summarize that and create that into a note because this information as it currently stands is only visible to me uh, and is not actually formally entered into the note, into the record. So I'm going to click select other note. It's really important that you've chosen your personal filter so that you only have a very small list to choose from. This is a ward round. Is it a consultant ward round or is it just a conventional ward round? If it's just a registrar ward round or an SHO ward round, I'm going to just choose progress note. And I'm going to put progress note here. If it was a consultant ward round, it would be consultant ward round and progress note. And I'm going to click OK. And here is my summary of the information that has been created. It's brought through my vital signs. It's brought through, it would have brought through any other um, investigations that had come through since that time and it would have placed in there any orders that I'd placed. So that's how you create your ward round note. And now that I'm happy with that, if I don't want to make any other changes, I am going to sign that. And when I come back to do tomorrow morning's ward round, in the same way, we can see that hopefully I would have updated any, anything further that might have happened overnight. It would have been updated here by the night team. Uh, when I come to documents, this is my progress note from yesterday, for yesterday's ward round. Clearly it would be very evident to me if there had been a further entry at 3 o'clock this morning from the night team. It would be entirely clear uh, that something had happened and what had been done and perhaps the night team uh, if the patient was discharging and the patient was on whatever night the night team may have changed that to unstable and encouraged me to go and see that patient earlier. The other use we would like you to make of this unstable stable discharging tab is for seven day working for consultant uh, assessment over the weekend. Any patient who is stable uh, doesn't require consultant review over the weekend, but any patient who is marked as unstable on a Friday night will be a useful flag as, as an indicative of a requirement for weekend review. Uh, and that's how we would like you to use this tab as well. So that's how we would hope and expect you to ward round, how to enter the data and how to ensure that data gets appropriately entered into the clinical record for other people to be able to use later on.